My appearance on Dr. Phil was a total disaster, a lost, a lost opportunity. The way I behaved was wrong. As I'm sure you all remember uh, Sexy Vegan. I am the beautiful vegan messiah. Now, if you're not familiar with Sexy Vegan, he was a guy that just wanted to be sexy and a vegan. Now, there's literally nothing wrong with that at all, and I'm not being sarcastic about it, seriously. But you know it's bad when not only your own son put tattoos on his face that says Sexy Vegan and moonwalking on cars. Yes, he did that. <laughs> Only in Hollywood. What's going on? Oh my God. <laughs> to Susie. Wait, what? He's moving. <laughs> All right, now I'm not gonna lie to you. That moonwalk you hit was crispy as. F but when you're out here just like freaking hitting moonwalks on cars and calling yourself the beautiful vegan Messiah, then that's obviously a problem. Actually, right now, I'm just going to fast forward to the part where he actually goes back on the show, which uh, obviously saves me some editing time. So uh, let's get to it. I'm really sorry. What's up, last time. I really appreciate right. it. It's so nice of you to forgive me and have me back. Well, have a seat. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to have you back. You, it was three months since you were here last time, and you haven't been arrested. Correct. You haven't had complaints from your neighbors. Correct. You haven't been kicked out of your apartment. Uh, why? Well, D Dr. Sophie's been a, been such a help to me. He just mm -hmm. came into my life at the at the right time, and, and he just he just knew like what to say. Right. You say being on the show last time, the way you chose to approach it, right, was a disaster. Yeah, absolutely. What was your take me through your thinking at the time? Well, after the show, I thought I was going to get committed. I just had that feeling. Like, when the security was escorting out, I'm like, uh-oh, I'm going to get committed. 5150 right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been there before. So um, <laughs> when I was not 5150, I was grateful. But then when I got home, I was really, I was really depressed, and I uh, cuddled with my dog. And I'm like, you know, maybe I just, maybe I'll never be successful. Then I reached out to my mom because I was desperate and hopeless, and, uh, and Sophie came into my life, Dr. Sophie. I'm sorry, but I have to say something about this. This so-called doctor just stared this man up and down, not once, but twice. Now, I was going to let it slide the first time, but uh, this he's making me a little suspect. Uh, if you catch my drift, he's a little suspect. Well, I've often said um, I'm the least judgmental person I've ever met. I mean, I'm sure there are <laughs> other people out there. I wish more people were like you. You wish more people were like Dr. Phil. Well, you are just on a whole new level of kissing ass, aren't you? I, the thing that struck me is I, I am a huge animal lover. Oh, that's I've had this, I rescued a dog 13 years ago. I've still got her today, Maggie. Uh, I give more money to animal charities than any other charity. Uh, and I, I knew that you're very sincere oh, yeah. about that. So I thought anybody that's got that kind of heart has got to be a good guy at, at the core of his soul, so I said, you know, absolutely, bring him on. I, uh, I don't, I don't care, I don't care if he dances backwards. If he loves animals, I, I mean, I'm down with him. So the, I, I, I approached it with really an open mind and wanted to sit down and talk with you. So I'm glad to do it now. You know, I, I do get judged a lot for being different. The extremes are going to push people away. Or else they get a little too scared, right? Yeah, those shorts could be scary. What would you do if you were a tiny version of you? Can you take a shower, use the loo, make some breakfast, pull a four on scoop? What if you couldn't escape? We cannot escape. This is a small escape. Somebody please send for help.